Hello, Monsters of Aaron here, and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 3 in a brand new campaign with a new DLC, Forge of the Chaos Dwarves. We're playing as Draz Hothiashen. Exactly, there we go. Now, if you don't know who the Chaos Dwarves are, they're basically dwarves, but before the polar warp, warp gates, warp gates, warp gates collapsed, they went east. And then the gates collapsed. Oops. It's a bit of a boo-boo, isn't it? And they got cut off. So, in the desperation, they turned to a big red flamey bull man called Hashet, who taught them about cool things like industry, fire, slavery, and big hats. They're basically Victorians, and... Oof, citation needed. And... The law, the law for the Chaos Wars is a little bit sparse, to be fair. And we've got three characters we can play as. We've got uh, the Sorcerer Lord, because Chaos Lords are led by Sorcerer Lords, effectively. Um, the dwarves that can cast magic, but they do turn to stone, because... I don't know, reasons, I guess. So we've got this guy up here. I can't remember what his fucking name is. And he's like a, he's turned to stone because he's really old. He's been casting magic a lot. And he's, he gets like a mech body, which is pretty natty to get mech daddy. Um, we've got Zaitan the Black. He's up here somewhere. Um, the law for him is basically that he's got a maniacal laugh and he can equip four magic items. That's it. You might think I'm lying. Check it. It's true. Maniacal laugh equips four items. That's it. That's his law. Um, the... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so fucking vanilla. And then we've got um, Draz Hoth the Asher. Now, this guy's kind of the new kid on the block. He's kind of a fresh new flavor. He's come in. He's he's suggested some some fancy new ideas, like like I don't know, mood boards and Monday morning stand up meetings or something to the other sorcerer lords. And they're like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Get the fuck out of here!" I right, don't want your fresh new ideas. So they've sent him away and exiled him. Um, he's defending now the Black Fortress, which is kind of like the southernmost uh, border of the Chaos Dwarfs lands, and tends to be the one that comes under attack the most. So basically, he's a bit busy trying to defend himself to uh, to do any to get up to any mischief. Um, but we're going to change that because we're playing as him. So the Chaos Dwarfs have a whole oh, they've got so much stuff going on. So they've got like a whole new economy, which I think I'll probably go over in another video. Needless to say, we need laborers, not slaves. Mm -mm -mm. Labor. I'm using I'm using finger quotations here, but you can't see it, but I am. Laborers, basically interns, they get exposure to the elements. And so we get, get laborers. Laborers produce raw materials. Raw materials produce armaments. And we also have conclave influence, which is kind of like the, the political like shenanigans of the Chaos Wars. Um, now, we have different settlement types as well. Holy shit, they've actually introduced an economy into Total War. Will this work? Who knows? So, uh, we have we have our main settlements. These are kind of like our main settlements. We've got a big drill. A giant conveyor there, which is going to produce raw materials. Um, but it also needs a certain amount of labour to produce. Obviously, labour will decrease as, 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 as the labourers get all that exposure. Which, obviously, will allow them to die and so we, we need more interns so, we, so we've got to put our feelers out to grab more interns so that's what we'll be doing getting more interns to to get exposure and uh, that will produce resources dependent on the workload so for example if we have like 500 workloads we could produce 500 raw materials but only if we had 500 slaves i think that's how it works generally it's fine then we can do that in settlements called, I don't know, outposts or something, I think. There's outposts and factories. I think that's right. So outposts are like where we, we give the laborers exposure. And then factories where we turn that exposure into goods and armaments, which is fun. So um, basically it goes it goes laborers in quotations to raw, res to raw materials to armaments. And when we can use our, well, we can move raw resources to make money as well, because money is the other thing. Obviously, we still got money, um, but we then have the armaments which we can use to upgrade the amount of units we can have. So we can have as many hobgoblins and laborers as we want, but to get chaos wars, they're kind of like the rare guys in in our armies. We're going to need to spend armaments to increase the number of them that we can recruit, and we also get fun things like steam trains. Which is good. They only have one carriage, though, at the moment. Hopefully, at some point, they'll be able to like slap more on them. But for the moment, they've only got they've only got the one carriage. But it's fine. So we get steam trains as well, which is cool. Um, so we've also got a character down here. He's Luctas the Bronze. He's got a gun, which is an axe, 
And uh, that's, that seems to be a theme in Warhammer 3, does it? Lots of guns also being axes at the same time. I'm cool with that. I really like that idea. So gun as an axe. I, I feel like, you know, I like axes. I like guns. Why not bring the two together? It's, uh, it's, it's like Neapolitan ice cream if you only had two flavours. That was a bad analogy. Never mind. Anyway, so we're going to... So we're going to pop... Look, look, what, what is your thing? You're boastful. I see. I see. What's the little eye next to the... Oh. Uh, no, I don't know what that eye is. I'm just going to ignore that. Cool. Good, right. We're going to pop you in the army. Increase our mobility. Increase my killing power, eh? Okay, we've got some options here. I mean, obviously, we've got the, the, the giant conveyor. A Gromril tipped drill assembly line. That sounds quite fun. And then over here we've got Infernal Barracks. So we can recruit the Infernal Castlian. And upkeep reduction for the Infernal Castlian. That sounds quite fun. Uh, obviously the, the Chaos Stalls are limited in the numbers we can recruit. We could maybe go for Hobgoblins though. Hobgoblins are unlimited. That's an option. I mean we could maybe go for defences just straight off the bat. What's this? A prototype Mega Mortar. Yeah, I mean that. Why not? Why the fuck? I mean, probably we want money, right? Income generated. Yeah. So sure. Let's just let's just go with money. Money's money is an obvious thing. Our army starts off with we've got a Kadai Fireborn. So these guys are like big flamey demon boys. They're quite fun. And we got Chaos Dwarf Blunderbuss. I like blunderbusses. We got the Infernal Guard with fire glaze. They're just like they're, they're the axe axe gun boys. We got some laborers who we're definitely going to give some exposure to, as well as some orc laborers. And then we got what 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 do you have, mate? What is your thing? Let's have a look. So you've got more campaign movement range, which is lovely. Upkeep reduction for Kadai units. Great. And Dark Renown, whatever the fuck that is. He just gives more melee attack to people near him. That seems fine. I'm happy with that. We've also got his special skill tree. We've got, oh, a headdress of Tsar. Makes your head, makes you, increases your missile resistance. I'm assuming because your hat's so big, it soaks up missile fire. And uh, we've got towering heights, which is some, you know, basic stuff there, which is fine. We are legion, which is going to give us armament cost reduction for increasing capacity for infernal, infernal guard, infernal. Now that's quite nice. And so we probably want to get that fairly early. Creed of Asgoth, more income from cities and raw material output. That's quite nice. Uh, Master of Hell, which is going to give us our Kadai boys a little bit more, a bit more killy, which is great. Ashen, which is just some nice bonuses there for him. And Long Years of Exile, which gives him uh, Flames of Asgoth upgraded, because of course he is a caster as well. And he's got the new, the new spell tree, which is the, the Law of Hashet, I think, which has got some nice spells in there. I don't know why some of this has got, like, the eye next to it. I'm very confused as to what the fuck that is. Also, you've now got the thing where if you hold it up, you can see the little bar at the bottom there. Yeah! That's quite good. Yeah, I don't know what the eye is. I don't know what the eye means. What the fuck does the eye mean? Okay, never mind. We're going to ignore the eye. And we're going to kill some green skins. Let's kill us some green skins. First battle of the brand new campaign. It's got that, mmm, in, in, industrial zone oil <laughs> oh look at this industrial wasteland of course every industrial wasteland needs pipes what is their purpose do they make sense not important the important thing is they're there to make it look industrial and shit also to get in my fucking way in two ways one the fact that my the, the camera does it look. Look, look what's the point in that what the fuck what why why is there camera collision there you psychopaths and also it's also more to shout anyway uh, we've got the orc laborers here they're like uh big interns they're the muscles then we've got there's our chaos dwarf blunderbusses big hats amazing goblin interns and then we've got the infernal. Right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pause it right here a second because I just want to point something out here. And uh, now these guys obviously are, sh are, are sh shooty boys, right? They have their guns. They're shooting. Um, question: How? 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 Like what? What are they looking out of? What? How? Like how do they? How do they know where they're shooting? That's the real question here. I mean, look at this guy. He's got like. Nine little little eye holes, and that's it. On one side, on one side. Look at the guy behind him. He's gone. Well, I've got too much vision of anything, so I'm. 
I'm going to fill 66% of my current vision with rings. <laughs> Apparently. Sure. Sure, why not? Why the fuck not? Why not? Why not? Why? Yeah, why not? Uh, here is a Drazhoth, the Ashen. He's got his little torch there. He sticks it in the ground. It's very good. I mean, either the ground is very loose or he's just got good upper body strength, which is fantastic. And then we've got Luctus the Bronze here. He's not wearing a helmet for good fucking reason. You can see Drazoth using his... What's that spell called again? Uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, Burning Wrath. Burning Wrath shoots like a mortar-like effect. And then it does an AoE. It can be quite potent. The Blunder Boss is getting some good shots in there. We're trying... Trying off the Dark Subjugation. Which is going to reduce melee defense and leadership for these Black Orcs. She's going to mean they only have seven melee defense, which means that our orc laborers should actually do some damage to them. Amazingly. Elsewhere, the orc war boss is currently getting flanked, and we're shooting him in the face with guns. That's right, but guns don't kill people. Chaos dwarves do. The guns help. Oof. That's rough. I, I, I love the blunderbusses. I genuinely love them. They're so much fun. There goes another... Dark, whatever the fuck that was. See the little AoE effect there? Very nice. Spinning, spinning orcs around. Very good. There's the Kadai fireball at the back. Oh, it's fucking, it's fucking pipe. I swear to God. Out of the way. Kadai fireborn. Super sexy snake boys, I guess. Uh, who are actually pretty killing. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about them yet, but it's interesting. We're trying to use our mortar ability. This is the settlement ability from that big old cannon. Unfortunately, you may notice there's a pipe above them. That's right. I said the pipe was, was bad for two reasons. I fucking hate that pipe. It was put there to test me. That's his only actual function. That and to look industrial. The Orc Labourers continuing... To wail away on, on the Black Orcs, but we're just going to pull them back. Oh, they're routing. So that we can get the, the Blunderboss boys in here. The uh, the Black Orcs charging in. Get him with that Dark Subjugation again. Get the Goblins in there. Then the Black Orcs going to get a point blank blasting. This guy thinks he had a lucky. No, he's not. He's shattered. They're breaking. They're out of there. And uh, you can see Drashoth doing some, some jetpacking with his. This, jeez, what a boss! Okay, well that's some green skin instead. Ah, oh, absolutely no casualties. I mean, of, of, of import. So we get seventy-two laborers. We could increase that number, which we're kind of tempted by. You know what? Let's do that. Let's do that. What is the... Yeah, I, I know how we play. I know how we play. Uh, what is the garrison here? They do... That's my garrison. I was like, why do they have Chaos Dwarfs? They don't. That's, that's my garrison. I mean, we could maybe go for it. Could maybe get, just, just go straight for it. Do we just go straight forward? I'm, I'm kind of thinking we just go straight for it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking the answer is yes. An inspiring presence, maybe. Could get more burning. You know what? I want more burning wrath. I'm, I'm going to go for it. Let's go balls to the wall. It says decisive victory. I mean, it is mostly just goblins, so. No pipes this time. Well, th there are pipes, obviously, but... Not near me, which is which is kind of the important thing. Oh, headshots! It's from L L Luktaz. Luktaz the Brom. I need to give him a better name. My naming scheme, I think, will be like modern day Seven Dwarves. So rather than having Happy, Grumpy, Doc, it'll be things like you know, crushing anxiety and deep depression, that kind of thing. Because obviously they're Chaos Dwarves. The Kadai moving around on the flank, charging into those Goblin Wolf Riders. Should make fairly short work of them. And we've got the uh, the mortar coming down. It was blocked by the pipes last time. 
This time, no pipes to stop me. That'll do it. Meanwhile, the goblin laborers, despite, despite the opportunities of exposure that they get, are bloody running away, the cowards. The upgraded, oh fuck, what's it called? Burning Wrath, deal, shoots three, three mortars. That's right, three mortars. Chaos Dwarf Blunderbuss is taking a little bit of return fire there, but that's not too bad. Unfortunately, as I say, the, uh, the ungrateful Orc Laborers are fleeing the battlefield. The complete bastards. So we're pulling back. Gonna bring the Iron... The, we're telling the Iron Guard, charge over there, to which they go, who said that? And which way? So we get them in because uh, they've actually got, you know, they've got 32 melee attack, 44 melee defense. And their weapon strength is pretty legit, so they're, they're, they will do fairly well. Meanwhile, the uh, the Kelsdorf blunderbuss is then shooting into the undefended flank. And there goes the, the Burning Wrath. Oh, what a shot! Annihilates that goblin unit. Absolutely devastating. So while the Infernal Guard chase off the last visages of the goblins. They still have a bunch of goblins surrounding us, surrounding Hasha. He's doing his, he's got like a flamethrower, which is pretty, pretty badass. Then we're going to drop the, the second mortar attack that we have directly on their little green heads. Unfortunately, they will flee out of range of it before it lands, but worth a shot. Okay, we've secured ourselves so that we can we can occupy that as a as a factory or an outpost. The outpost produces raw materials using labors, uh, labors, and the factory produces armaments based on raw materials. So what we're going to do? So I mean, our, our capital settlement is, but I, okay, I think we're gonna we're gonna occupy as an outpost. I think. I think that's what we're gonna do. I don't think this gives any bonuses to. Doesn't give any bonuses to the amount of R of like raw resources we make or anything like that. But we do have Karam. Many foreign merchants have a permanent warehouse base here, enabling the locals to easily source a wide range of trade goods from nearby regions. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. We've also got uh, a marble quarry, which is going to let us do a bit of oh raw. That's that's, that's not bad. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not bad at all. I'm kind of tempted to maybe go with, like, more money. We do have the extra extra resource, but ultimately we want to go for the marble quarry eventually. So, we'll go... Wait, how much money do we have? That's a huge amount. I am going to have to replace some of my losses. So let's do something like that. Because we want to take, uh, is it Dark Hold? Yes, it's Dark Hold. So we want to, we want to go for Dark Hold. Now, to our north, we do have some Chaos Dwarf friends. They do have an aversion towards us. Even, even other Chaos Dwarves hate our guts. Pretty much everyone does, to be honest. Uh, like Gold to aversion. That's twenty. Aversion twenty. Twenty. There's, there's a lot of people. I mean, aversion a hundred. Yeah, there's a lot of people. The green skins in general don't like us very much because obviously, you know. We do tend to enslave them a little bit. Sorry, sorry. I'm offer them in 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 turn positions. And we've also got all oh, there's like a, a little connect because there's the canal here actually does feed into yeah the, the sea of chaos, sort of chaos, the sea of sea of claws, it's just sea of something or other. That one, that that bit. That one, right. Tech wise, we've got a lot of stuff here. More bonuses for hobgoblins. Oh, I'm kind of tempted to do that. What about industry? Labor game post-battle. That would be quite nice. Income from trade towers. I mean, we don't have any of that yet. So I'm tempted to maybe go for, like, the, the extra laborers. It's like a marketing thing. It lets us, you know, pull in more in interns. Um, the Curse of Hashet. It's like a single target to direct damage, which I'm kind of tempted by. It's quite expensive. It's only 10 seconds. 
but we don't have a lot of single character killing stuff at the moment. Speed, uh, well, not so. This this one's okay. It's only like a, um, what does the upgrade do? Does it give an area? Oh, extended duration. Okay, it's not an area of effect. I mean, this spell's quite, quite legit. Uh, I kind of, I kind of like the single target. Go for the single target and increase mobility because being fast is, is never a bad thing. Gotta go fast. Oh, I should have looked at the, the conclave stuff, but I don't think we've got enough conclave. Oh, I think it unlocks on turn five. I think the, the the convoys unlock on turn five as well. We can get convoys so we can send caravans out. Kind of like Cathay can, so we've got the Cathay mechanic, um, which is good. Although I do, I, I, I question how useful it is like later on in the campaign where your convoy can get just annihilated so easily because you'd have no control over where it's going and if it lands in a, you know, next to three enemy armies, they'll just throw everything they've got at you to, to wipe you out. And, you know, that convoy is then dead, which is a bit of a shame. But never mind. Right, we're going to... We're going to head over here. We're going to head over here because you are recruiting stuff. Uh, let us go... How much money do we have? Okay. I think... Kind of tempted to go with that, just because it's cheaper. Gonna go for the cheap option. And then we're going to get... Kind of tempted to go for extra income. It's only 250. It's not a lot. Could I just go for... I mean, hobgoblins are better than, than laborers. So you know what? We're gonna we're gonna go with that. We're gonna go with that. We're gonna go. We're gonna take Darkhold. That's that's our next objective. Secure the province, and then we can look at you know other th people to offer internship to. So Gore Gore does the backstabber. A recent uprising of orc and goblin laborers almost spilled over into full-blown rebellion, if not for the conniving actions of one of your hobgoblin middle managers. Your informants tell you that the hobgoblin had initially joined the rebellion before working his way into the inner circle of the rabble-rousers and promptly plunging his knife into every one of their backs. Of two things, there is little doubt. First, that the hobgoblin's actions were not made as an act of loyalty to you, and secondly, that the potential catastrophe for the supply lines has been averted by the backstabbing nature. Yet some damage has still been done, with leaders' droves of escaping orcs and goblin labourers now scattered to join nearby warbands. March out to claim back the losses from your workforce, and perhaps find the hobgoblin to put him into a more useful post. So we need eight of the following units, which we can definitely do. And we get, now, what have you recruited? I'm hoping you've mostly just recruited garbage. Oh, there we go, survivalist. We'll go with survivalist. Okay, we've got we got a nice squishy front line here to soak it up. I mean, yeah, it's 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 mostly goblins, isn't it? Hmm. Hope they didn't need those goblins. He's lost his head anyway. Okay, this army is mostly goblins, so I'm feeling pretty confident. Of course, now we've got our Chaos Dwarf boys. I was I just... I mean, I, I know all of the models in, in Chaos... In Chaos Dwarves in Total War always look amazing, but these guys are just oh, look look at the red of their hats. It's so wow, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Meanwhile, the Kadai moving around on the flank just because they're a little bit faster than everyone else, so uh, they can protect our flank nicely from those nasty Goblin Wolf Riders. They're also very good, at, like formation disruption. They really do send like. Densely packed units flying all over the place. They're really good for that. Which is a benefit in itself. You see the Iron Glaze getting some shots in there. Getting some nice bombardment in here. With the fire. Is it Fiery Wrath? I'm going to forever forget what the fuck that spell is called. Doesn't matter. The Goblin Laborers holding onto the flank there very nicely. What the fuck is that spell called again? 
Uh, burning Wrath, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the Goblin Laborers look like they're starting to succumb to, you know, being stabbed, exposure, that kind of thing. Meanwhile, we've got the Chaos Dwarves holding back. So uh, should, should the Goblin Laborers decide to be ungrateful and retreat from their exposure, then the Chaos Dwarves will be there to hold the line for us, which is important. So we've got a, a portion of the enemy army on the run, which is good. Dra Drazoth charging in. I want to see what his combat animations look like. Oh. Um, okay, that's... Jesus, all right. Chill. <laughs> wow. He really knows how to use a torch, doesn't he? Jeez. I mean, he's not killing many goblins, though, so I reckon we'll just, you know, more to the fuckers. That'll do it. Yeah, no, I, I think that, that had the desired effects of, you know, exterminating everyone and reducing them to jam. The Kadai... Say, just really wrecking that formation. Sending goblins flying all over the place. And it should be saved to individual entities that get attacked from the back. So, for example, if you have one goblin hitting another goblin and the other goblin's facing the other, other way, they get bonuses to their attack. Because, obviously, you know, they're not being... They're not... They're being stabbed in the back, basically, aren't they? Is, is what's going on there. Looks like Slagger may well get away. But his faction's dead. Ooh, glittering scales. Very nice. I think we're going to do an outpost here, and then we'll create, like, a factory zone. This is going to be our... On the other hand, obviously, the more... Sl the more... You know what? I think I'm going to occupy as a factory. Just because I think that uh, with the special building here... This one. Because that's going to give us 500 raw materials and then we can get the the marble quarry so that's going to be another 500 that's going to be another 500 so i think that's that's quite a lot of slaves to have in us in the same province because obviously the more you have the more i haven't worked out quite what the what the most efficient thing is to do but the factory will give us armaments based on using our raw resources. It also has a money building, which is this one. Yeah, there we go. So that's going to give us 750 income, but will cost us 300 raw resources. So that's the thing. I don't think there's anything here that like increases... Um... Oh, yes, yeah, so there is a plus 30% raw. So I guess maybe having a factory in... I mean, obviously, it'd probably be better in a in a four-settlement four province to have two, two outposts and one factory and then have the 30%, I think. Maybe. I don't know. I need someone far smarter than I am to work out exactly what is what is best. Uh, bandolier. More ammunition. I mean, what I would like is to give you, like, a... A blunder, blunderbuss shot thing, but I don't think you have that, which is a real shame. You do get in. Oh, you get explosive bullets. I mean, obviously, we're going to give you explosive bullets. I mean, this gives you more bonuses. Magical attacks, more range. Cinder blast shell, what does that do? That's a magic missile attack. Enable sundering attacks. In your face is more explosive. I think, obviously, we're going to go in. I like explosions. Why wouldn't we go explosive? Um, let's go with piercing shots. That's just an obvious one. And then we're going to get... I kind of like the sneaky gits. So the sneaky gits have uh, malign authority. Friendly units with contempt in range. And then backstabbers. So they get uh, more base weapon damage if their hit points are greater than, uh, was it 50%? 50%, yeah. 
So let's. I kind of, I kind of want the archers. The cutthroats are a fairly good sort of like bog standard infantry, whereas these guys are more sort of flankers, which would be quite useful to take out like enemy archers and stuff. But maybe if we get some more of our hob, if we get some hobgoblin archers, then we can, we can do that. We can do that. Uh, more. Po I mean, we don't really have port stuff going on. So we've also got sorts. We've got tallest tower. More, more control. What maybe what's the con Okay, not not super unhappy, but not super happy. And do we have anything we can upgrade here? We do have the manufactory, but we need the armory for that, which we don't have. I guess we could upgrade these a little bit. And as you upgrade them, they get, like, bonuses, which is quite nice. But I kind of, kind of want to go with those. I think we, we can make do. Um, what income from refinery buildings we don't really have? Construction cost reduction sounds pretty good. So let's go with that. Obviously, we do have uh, Kugath to ourself, but being a Chaos Boy, we might be able to make friends with him. On the other hand, the problem with Kugath is he does tend to just, like, spread plagues and doesn't really care where they go. Or he's, he's not a great person to live next door to. Okay, where do we want to go? I'm tempted to say like Crookback Mountain, maybe head this way. Obviously we do have Imerick to our south, but I'm thinking, can we do co- how come, how come you've got convoys and I can't do convoys yet? I will. Oh, that's a, that's a Cathay. I mean, we could also, we could, we could just kill Cathay. Unfortunately, they are like too far away for us to do anything about, so we won't, we won't worry about that, I guess. I say we kill these guys. And it's probably Skaven and our hills as well. And the nice thing about Skaven is there's lots of them. Uh, let's... I would like a better front line than Orc Laborers, who... Let's be honest, not... Not great. Not great at holding a line, are they? They're not the best. What are our objectives? So we need to destroy Clan Rictus, who are over there, and the Knights of Kalador, who are down there. That gives us a short victory, which is going to give us... Oh! You know you know what? I was literally saying the other day how I, I wish that short victory and long victory were better. And actually, this is pretty good. This is really good. This is exactly the kind of thing. They need major relic missions become available. Brilliant. I don't know what that is, but great. And workload requirements for raw materials and raw materials consumed it's just it just generally makes your economy better that's great and then to get the, the long victory we need to get the short victory which is great to be honest the short victory is very achievable that's very achievable and then uh 80 settlements that's fine hold zana grund and we'll get the runic braces of skavor i mean this is this is great i love this yes good job guys we need to destroy the dwarves basically and grimgor I mean, Grimgor is a Black Orc, and obviously the Black Orcs were created by the Chaos Dwarves. Um, the problem is, when you make a big, muscly... When you, when you take an Orc, and you go, you know what would be better if Orcs were bigger and musclier and more aggressive? It doesn't work out great sometimes. Oh. The Moon Howlers are dead. Alright, well, we've got, we got a convoy. So we've got some options for where we can send our convoy. And I really like the sharpshooters. That's that's very good. I mean, extra defense isn't bad. I just feel like the shooty boys. So we're going to get uh, Harak Star Taker. The old Star Taker. And so, where do we want you to go? We could just take you to the Hall of Greasus. That would cost us some money but get us some more resources which is fine uh we, can, we don't have any we don't really have well we do have some armaments but not a lot maybe this would be a good for like just just nipping over here getting some more resources right let's just give you a little bit of experience wouldn't it and we can increase that a little bit because you get experience for finishing a run and i think that's going to be a fairly fairly quick quick little run, get you some experience, then he can send you out on some tougher things, can't we? 
Uh, pandemic preparations. Being that we are quite close to Kugath, that may not be the worst thing. I, I'm not invested in that one. I think we may go for the upkeep reduction. We don't have many Chaos Dwarves at the moment, so we're not going to worry too much about that. However, the fact that uh, it looks like Clan Rictus has taken Mount Greyhag, I think we need to take that off them. So we are currently losing uh, raw materials every turn at the moment because we are only producing 100 and we're spending 150. So obviously that's more. That's how maths works. We do have some labor activities, so we can, like, generate more conclave influence, which might be a good idea. Uh, when does a conclave become available? Once you attain 75 influence, I see. Uh, this will, will just generate more money, but it will cost us laborers, and this is more control, but again, cost us laborers. I'm tempted to maybe go with control just to, like, get this. I mean, provincial instability will get better. Nah, that's probably fine. If they're about to rebel, we'll do something about it. Alright. Let's see if they're home. Anyone home? Uh, let's cancel the move and see what we got. I don't think that's too bad. I think we can take him. It's it's a bit balls to the wall, but fuck, it says period victory. It says, I think we, I think we got this. Yeah, you better run. This turned up a real hornet's nest. I had to send, look, what the, what the fuck is your name? I need to give you a better name. Look, Taz. I sent Luke to take a pot shot at the rats, and uh, obviously it, uh, it aggravated them slightly. He did kill three of them, but uh, it was enough to draw in the entire enemy army, which is good because there's, there's a lot of rats. Uh, four, four, four thousand, four thousand of the buggers, four and a half thousand basically. And they outnumbered me quite substantially because I'm not counting the laborers. The laborers are going to do shit. So there's two things we need to do. One, kill the Doom Wheel. Two, kill Dretch. Obviously, we've had some menace from below being used on us. I think they're all dead now, so we don't have to worry about them anymore, which is nice. Laborers are going to be a speed bump at most. I think. I think. Th why do you've got? Why have you got 24 melee defense? Are you getting the bonuses from the settlement? But without... Is that how that works? I genuinely don't know. They do, they do seem to have like a beefed up melee defense. And I genuinely don't know why. You don't. Not sure. Not sure. Either way, uh, they easily out... The clan rats easily outclass my laborers. Which they're, they're, they're clan rats, right? That That's a concern. The Kadai are on the flank because we may have a blob of infantry moving around here. So obviously we need to protect our rear line. Already taking some missile fire there from the Slingers. They've also got an assassin. Managed to get some shots in him. Not enough. Okay, there's a Doom Wheel. Need to focus all fire on this damn thing to take it out. Does it cause terror? It does. That could be a concern. What's this? Devasta oh, it's a devastating flanker. That's it. Pick it off. See, it's already terrified the orc laborers. They've already broken. So this flank is already starting to break. Yep, that's not good. That's not good. Fortunately, we've got our hobgoblin cutthroats. Made of slightly sterner stuff than the, uh, the interns. Getting the shots in that doom wheel. That doom wheel is going down. Yeah! Kill it! Kill it! Kill it with fire! Oh my god, there's so many clan rats! So many fucking clan rats! Oh shit, son! Laborers are still holding for the moment, and the Kadai have spotted some Skaven slaves coming out of the trees. It's jam o'clock. Delicious rat jam. Okay, Tretch has found. Drazhoff. 
We just need to pull everyone else out of here and let the infernal boys, the infernal guards, basically just riddle him full of bullets. That's the plan. Some nice, nice burning wrath right in the center there. Did some good damage. That's what we need. So there we go. So there's Tretch. Tretch is now... That, that, see, that's what we need. That's what we need. Now we can just fill him full of bullets. He is quite a nasty, nasty duelist. But um, taking a lot of missile fire there. Not going to work out for him. Bring the fucker down. The blunderbusses opening up on the storm vermin who are trying to fight their way through our chaos dwarves. It's the battle is currently balanced on a knife edge. It could go either way. However, Tretch is being taken. He's, he's, he's running. He's now unspottable and stalk. He's, he's got. He's you stay here. I'll get help. So he's going to flee. Oh, I think he's using his um. His oh, he's got glittering scales. He's, he's, he's legging it. He's off. If we, if we can take him out, that will be a big morale shock. And hopefully, hopefully, I can't believe the orc laborers are still fighting. That is impressive. The chaos tools are there helping them out just in case. We're missile dueling with the enemy slingers. Oh, there's still so many rats. Uh oh, breakthrough, breakthrough, death runners. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Okay, okay, we managed to take out a lot of the death runners, but they're moving into combat with the dwarf blunderbosses, and that's not good because that will reduce their armor quite significantly. We need to, um, that's it, bring them down, shoot them, kill them, I don't care what. Oh, thank God. They're broken. They're broken. Oh, God. Do you, have, do you guys have shields? Holy shit. You've got 54. Jesus, you're, you're silver shielded. I didn't even realize you had silver shields. Yikes. Okay, the blunderbusses are safe. Uh-oh. Spoke too soon. Assassin. Kill the assassin. Shoot him. Shoot him. Bring him down. Kill him. I think... I think they got this. Yeah, he's running. He's afraid. He's afraid. Eight, come on. One more shot. One more shot. One more shot. One more shot. One. He's only got 18 health. Oh, he's getting away. It's really fine. I don't. I suspect the Skaven probably don't have public health care. Chaos Tool still holding the line. Up to 84 kills. Still holding the line. Good work there, guys. Drazoth continuing to just hold the center by himself. Although there are some Hobgoblin Cutthroats there helping him out as well. The Kadai have been just amazing holding the flank for us against so many units of Skaven. They've killed 400. Still have quite a large blob back here. The Goblin Laborers returning to the fight. The Orc Laborers long since fled the battlefield. The Chaos Dwarves still again holding on to that flank. Keeping us safe. Allowing our guns to do the business. And this battle seems to be a victory for us. I mean, the Pyrrhic victory. It did, I mean, the author has all suggested Pyrrhic victory. It wasn't wrong. We did lose a lot. A lot of laborers. But I think actually, otherwise, we did quite well. Oh, only 140 labor, really? Jesus. Doesn't seem like that much. Um, do we occupy this as a... I think we'll occupy as an outpost. I think we'll do that. Right. We've got more speed, which I guess is, is nice as a dwarf. Uh, more leadership when... I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a trash. It's a trash trait. Tretch has a trash trait. But three skill points, though. Holy balls. Uh, let right. Do I want to maybe do this? Uh, Hobgoblin. Okay, no. I, I don't think I do. Killing fire. What does killing fire do? Affects all. So it just does damage to everyone. 
which is quite nice. I, I do like Burning Wrath. I do like Burning Wrath. Um, it's a fairly cheap spell, but it can't. I mean, it's 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 a little bit um. What's what's the word I'm looking for here? Unreliable, but it can do a lot of damage, which is quite nice. Uh, this does affect speed. That will give us more shooting time, but um, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm t I'm tempted to like. I don't really care about that. But we can, mm, 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 mm. Curse is fine. So you know what? I'm going to get curse, just because. That increases the duration a little bit, and it's only like two extra wins of magic from what it was, so that's that's obviously better. Then I guess that one, just because it deals damage to everyone, and then I'm gonna get that. Not better, as a well that yeah, exactly, quite. We're going to get explosive shots because that's just bitching. Uh dig in, upgrade it. Missile resistance, more range. Um, sure. Flash Bomb is... is okay. The range is a little bit on the low side. I am going to go with, uh, I guess this one? Actually, no. Change my mind. More mobility. That's the tickets. That's the bloody ticket, isn't it? Alright, we're going to merge you idiots. And you idiots. And we'll do something like that. Now, you're obviously recruiting. Crookback Mountain is a capital, which means it will have a fairly beefy garrison. We probably want to build this, this province up before we do anything else. The only thing is, once I get to level 3, I want to knock all these buildings down. Uh, because, like, the, I mean, the Hobgoblins are fine. I wouldn't mind Wolf Riders, like, chasing units down. That would be quite fun. More control. Do I care about control? Nah. 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 We don't have any growth buildings, though, do we? Nothing. Not a not a sausage. Um, okay, let's get some more raw materials. Let's do that. Let's do that. I, do I want to do anything like this? The laborers were absolute trash, weren't they? Like they just they just broke. I, I try and give them all this exposure, and they just they just run away, the cowards. I could give myself two turns. I think I'm going to need two turns to just replenish my losses, which is going to give them time to recruit. But I'm hoping they can't recruit anything particularly nasty, and it'll just be, like, shitty. Shitty lads. You do get more bonus versus infantry, but your melee defense is less... They don't tend to have. They won't have many missile units, I don't think, or at least not particularly good missile units. No, you are more expensive though. Uh, maybe if we do something like that. Let's go with that. And our military convoy is—he's on his way. Ah, oh, look at this. Look at this. Give us more, more, re re more raw resources, which is what we need because currently we are losing. Losing more resources, so we need more re resources. Re That's the words. Me fail English? That's impossible. Ooh. Guide has tracked down our convoy, offering to lead the way to our destination exchange for a reasonable donation. Uh, I'm going to find our own path. You can go your own way. I don't like the fact they are recruiting. One, two, they've recruited six units in one turn. Get stuffed. What the hell is that? Starved wolves? I mean, we don't have any wolf riders. I wouldn't mind wolf riders. You know what I really like is the fact you can actually see what units this, this technology actually affects now, which is great. That's fantastic. That's exactly... We don't have any trading. Well, well, well... 
well, mandatory service, recruitment cost reduction. It's not that useful, but it does lead on to some slightly more... Ah, uh, we'll get Star Wars. Mostly because... Exactly. Uh, mostly because... If I'm going to upgrade stuff... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend my armors. Like, it's going to be a sort of great stuff, like getting more, more Chaos Dwarf Warriors. To be honest, what I really want is more Blunderbusses. I don't have any Blunderbusses, though. Oh, God. Can you imagine Blunderbusses? They're such good boys. We do have Chaos Dwarfs down here. Uh, more money. Which actually costs raw materials. But, but we did get more. We, we, we now have more raw materials coming in, which is great. Did you recruit more shit? You better not have. Okay, well, those nerds are dead. Maybe we should do some... Is there, is there anyone even vaguely... Like, the servants of the Conclave kind of like me. I mean, not enough to actually get the... Um, there's a baseline evaluation of, of minus 50 there, so probably, probably not. Goldtooth does, though. That's going up. Because uh, we sent him a caravan. He was like, oh, cool. You here to pay me tribute or what? I could join your war against Karakazorn, maybe. Would you like me to do that? I could do that. Do I... Do I... Do I... Do I want to do that? Like... If I just... If I just do that... You're on the gravy train. You, you fucking love gravy, don't you? Um, oh, did we do that? I wasn't even I wasn't even checking, but apparently we did. Oh, good for us. And we got the convoy complete. Lovely. We've got gore buds. He's got the banner of slavery and the dagger of malice. So he's fun. His trait is distrustful disposition, which reduces global uh, recruitment duration for hobgoblins and also increases the leadership in the hero's army, which is nice. And he's also got some skills like Fated, so he's got more hero action success chance, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. And he's also lucky, so a little bit of ward save. And he's sneaky, which is nice. He also, he got some, does he give bonuses to, I'm sure he gives bonuses to hobgoblins as well. Is he not? Oh, there we go. Upkeep reduction for hobgoblins, the stabbiest, and then extra bonuses. So basically, any army you put him in, the hobgoblin's going to be fucking off the chain. Off the chain. Okay, I... Can we reach that? We can. We can. Right, we're going to get rid of that goblin, and we're going to pop you in the army. Boys here. Give replenishment, which is what we need. And then we're going to attack Crookback Mountain. We're going to go for it. That's right. We're fucking going for it. No one can stop me. We're doing it. It's happening. It's fucking happening. That's a lot of ratties. That is a shit ton of ratties. That is so many rats. Is, is that even... I mean, that's a lot of Skaven Slingers, isn't it? Like, there's me going, ah, we don't need, we don't need missile defense. No, but, like, you'll be bur buried under a pile of pebbles. <sighs> okay, well, we're going to go for it. It's going to have to wait until next time, though. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.